welcome to um, this segment on discussing multidisciplinary care in um, PPC. My name is Ho-Chan Gillis. I'm a nurse practitioner in Richmond, Virginia. And we have... And I'm Sarah Dawkins. I'm a nurse practitioner at Duke University. So there's a lot of you know knowledge out there about how the role of multidisciplinary um, teams can improve health outcomes. And so I was wondering, especially in a, in a complex disease such as PBC, so how do you approach that in your practice, Sarah? Yes. So um, primary biliary cholangitis is a very complex disease. With um, It's very multifaceted. Um, so it's very important to involve other uh, specialties in their care. Um, I think first... Um, People with PBC are at risk for bone density loss, so making sure if they have osteoporosis or any evidence of bone density um, loss that they are followed by endocrinology to see if they're a candidate for bisphosphonate therapy. Um, pa patients with PBC have a lot of symptoms um, that are very uh, can affect their quality of life very poorly. Fatigue, puritis are the biggest um, that I hear of in my practice. So. Um, ruling out alternative causes of fatigue um, and also with the primary care provider is very important. Um, and then with puritis, that's a whole different story, but there's um, kind of working down um, the list of you know, approved medications to um, treat puritis and, and off-label use for puritis um, and eventually sometimes involving dermatologists um, to assist with um, kind of puritis that's not... Um, is not responding to usual treatments and therapies. And that's usually where I start. What about what about you with your practice? Is there anything, any other disciplines that you involve in your care? Well, I think it's uh, definitely, it's a team sport. I mean, it's very challenging to manage these patients because they just feel so miserable. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of uh, patients have their own regimens or they have their own um you know, cocktails for, you know, skincare and, and they take a lot of supplements, you know. Um, and I think that role involving, you know, pharmacists has been really great in um, our practice. So that way, not only they could, you know, uh, look at their comprehensive medication reconciliation, but also think about other things um, that, you know, to, that can help their symptoms. Um, and then I, I think, too, that... Um, I, I really have been fortunate to work with uh, colleagues of, that are social workers. And because a lot of the problems that I think that our patients face may not just be, not just their symptoms or fatigue or or their pruritus, but it's, you know, they have, you know, they don't have access to certain things that, you know, even though we can write a prescription for it, but if they can't get it or they have other, you know, social determinants of health that are maybe posed as barriers, you know, to, um, you know, to getting them optimized or, or promoting their access to certain services. And then um, I think that uh, the role of mental health specialists, because again, um, have been really critical. And I, I really refer a lot to them because, you know, our patients are, are miserable, right? And so it just really, again, supports the complexity. It's not just a liver disease. It, it impacts so many aspects of their lives. And I think that's why, you know, the role of the multidisciplinary team, especially in complex disorders like PBC, is really, you know, um, you know, really important. I mean, the patients in the center, I, I just feel like that I'm, I'm just one aspect, you know, of, of that team. And so um, what other, you know, um, what other experiences that, you know? Yeah. I, I'm glad you brought the mental health because I think a lot of these patients, they have puritis. It's keeping them up all, all night. They're extremely fatigued. Um, they can, it can lead to depression. It can lead to social isolation. So getting mental health colleagues on board is so important with these patients. Um, and pharmacy as well, helping with like prior authorization with um, some of the newer medications, like the second line therapies that we have available now, which are great. And some of them are hopefully going to help some of the symptoms associated with PBC. Um, I think the other, um, the other person, the other um, discipline I would include is like cardiology as well um, for patients who have lipid abnormalities um, to make sure that they're on board with managing that. Um, so, yeah, like you said, this is such a complex disorder that um, that we are just one part of the team. Um, of course, the patient's at the center, but we're all kind of working together to make sure that they have the best outcomes and um, quality of life living with this chronic condition. 
Yeah, I also think that dietitians are also important, but you know, not every practice has access to a, a good dietitian, um, especially. I think we are what we eat and um, there are certain things that, you know, they need as far as nutritional supplements or other things. Um, um, so I, I, I find that very helpful, but, you know, a lot of folks don't have access, you know, to that or you don't have a dietitian that works with you. And and sometimes when you do refer, you know, you just don't know, but it's that's why I think like the team, you know, based, um, you know, model really works, especially if, It'd be nicer if they're in, you know, in, in your oh, own in the clinic, in, the, yes. in your setting, right? So, but you know, you mentioned an important aspect, which is new treatment strategies. You know, because some of the medicines that we used, you know, actually made people feel worse, and so that's really been um, um, very helpful to see that the patients feel better, um, especially with their paritis. You know, fatigue is probably the most challenging. Um, but, you know, you can always look at your patient, you know, by the amount of excoriations oh, that they awful. have. And it's just, it's a it's a very poor quality of life. And um, uh, what I think is too, uh, at, you know, which I wish I could promote more, but is, you know, exercise because it's really hard to tell folks that, you know, struggle with fatigue and, um, and just a lot of things that I could give tidbits, you know, as a nurse practitioner, you know, to, you know, holistically, you know, approach, you know, and, and because to do that, to approach it holistically, you really need a, you know, um, a, a good interdisciplinary team. So. Very true. I'm glad you brought up the social work too. Um, I think that's such a key point in this care. I mean, you can sit and tell a patient to take this medicine or get these labs done, but if they're not able to do that, like it's, it, it doesn't work, right? So um, that's it. I'm really glad you brought that up. Well, I also think that um, there have been a lot of, you know, th folks that in the multidisciplinary team that um, I'm going to really promote like other patient advocacy groups because I think they're a great resource for patients, even though they may not be a direct member of your multidisciplinary team. And there's just so many um, uh, uh, the patient, the PBCers, they've been great. They put out a lot of great information to help, you know, patients with PBC too. And, um, looking, trying to, f I, I'm always trying to find, you know, additional resources that, you know, I can, you know, give my patients, you know, um, to help with their symptoms. So, and improve their health outcomes that way. I think the, maybe one of the last specialists, maybe rheumatology, if they have other kind of extra hepatic manifestations of, um, an autoimmune disease. So, um, that would be one other person that may be involved. Yeah, a lot of patients do have like this polyarthritis that are associated. So I think rheumatology is an, an excellent uh, addition to the um, in the multidisciplinary team because again, it, it would just be you know easier if it was just a, a you know a liver condition, right? Exactly. I mean, even though it is, but it just it just interfaces with so many aspects and different uh, you know parts of the body. So and we need all the help that we all can hands get. on deck. <laughs> exactly. So um, I think, you know, Sarah and I um, talked about, you know, really the important aspect of uh, multidisciplinary approaches and, and improving patient outcomes in those w with um, PBC and other chronic liver diseases. And, you know, um, we hope that, you know, other, you know, um, practice settings, you know, use this approach um, to not only, you know, manage their chronic liver condition, but also help a lot of their symptoms. So. Thanks, Sarah, for joining Thank me today. Thank you. It's been great talking to you.